Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make 3 clear aesthetic DIYs. So let's get started. The first one is a fake clear CD. Instead of using a real CD, we're going to be using a plastic packaging. Use any clear plastic that you have. I'm just using a plastic food box. And I'm tracing a smaller circle and a larger circle. I don't recommend cutting out the smaller circle. I tried to use a knife and it got the plastic crack. So just cut out the larger circle. Now we're going to start painting. We're actually painting on the back of the CD and the other side is going to be the front. We want to paint on the back since it will create a smooth surface on the front without any of the paint texture. I'm using a toothpick for the fine details. Don't worry about making the line too thick because we can just scrape it off later. And don't forget that the painting is going to be reversed since this is the back side. So I actually drew the play button in the wrong direction. I'm going to flip over the play button and make it correct. This playlist button kind of reminds me of those Spotify glass paintings. When painting, make sure you use a dabbing technique like this so that the brush strokes don't show through. And remember that when we're working on the back side, you have to work with the topmost layer first. That means that I'm going to do the yellow circles of the flower before I do the white petals because the yellow is on top of the white petals. Make sure that you make a very opaque layer of paint. It's kind of difficult to get a gradient, so I recommend choosing designs that have a solid block of color. But if you want a gradient, you can try using this technique. Make sure your brush strokes are not just on the surface, but press it hard to make sure they show on the other side, and blend both colors together. Don't forget to look on the other side to make sure that you can see both of the colors. Now I'm making daisies with the same dabbing technique. Just dab 5 dots in a circle around the yellow part and connect them. I think using a plastic instead of a real CD is a lot better because I don't want to sacrifice any of my CDs. For the cherries, I did the highlights on the front side instead of the back side. If you wanted to do highlights on the back like the other paint, you have to make sure that the highlights are the very first layer before the red paint. Now we're going to use a toothpick to clean up everything. I'm scraping off some of the thicker parts of the line to make it thinner. This scraping technique is a lot easier than trying to paint a thin line from the start. It's helpful to look at it against a white surface to spot any mistakes. Now to seal everything in, I'm going to use some Mod Podge. Only paint Mod Podge on the painted area. Because Mod Podge kind of has a texture when it dries, you don't want to paint it too much on the clear parts or it will show. I'm trying to add some glitter on the cherry one to see how it looks. I actually found out that if you paint a thick layer of Mod Podge, it creates a white cast, so only paint a very thin layer. And try to avoid any brush stroke texture. Try to make it as smooth as possible. So as you can see, there's some white cast from the thicker parts, so I'm using a wet cloth to wipe it off. Since I didn't cut out the smaller circle part of the CD, I'm going to use a sharpie to draw it on. And that's the finished CD. This next one is a faux glass painting on plastic, inspired by anime glass painting. So for this one, we're going to use the plastic packaging again. Let's cut out a rectangle. Make sure your sketch fits in the rectangle. Then look at your sketch in the mirror because we're going to be painting on the back side again, so the drawing is going to be reversed. You have to make sure it looks okay. Now we're going to outline our sketch. I recommend choosing a cartoon style drawing, like an anime style or a drawing with lots of solid color blocks, not detailed, since it's hard to get gradients using this glass painting technique. Tape down your plastic. I'm going to be using the paint from a paint pen since that's the darkest paint I have, but you can just use regular paint. We're going to start with the outlines first. Remember, we're painting on the back side, so we need to do it in a specific order. We need to do the frontmost layer first, because that's going to appear on the other side. So that's why we're doing the line art, because the outlines are on top of everything. Think about how it would look on the other side. We can't do the base layers because the base color is going to be under everything, so we need to do it last. Think of it like we're kind of working in a reverse order than we would usually do. It's easy to scratch off the paint if you made a mistake. 
it's very important to make a solid opaque layer. So do a double layer if you need. You can see that mine is kind of transparent right now. So I need to do a second layer. So now it's time for the cleanup. There's lots of little tiny mistakes and particles of paint that I don't want. So I'm just going to use a toothpick. This is very similar to the CD painting that we just did. Except now it's going to be different. Because we're going to do the second layer, which is the shadows and the highlights. If you have highlights, then do them. But I don't have any, so I'm just going to do the shadows. We're doing a dabbing technique. Lightly dab your paintbrush on top of the outlines or anywhere you want the shadows. Don't worry about covering the outline. It only matters what we're going to see on the other side. Doing this dabbing technique will create a smoother surface without any of the paint strokes showing through and it won't ruin the line art because the line art can be easily scraped off so we need to be careful. Don't do the regular stroking of the paintbrush. Remember to dab lightly. And remember that only the paint that's on the clear part will show through from the other side. Don't worry about how messy the back is. Look at the front side from time to time. These full glass paintings will take a really long time, so don't underestimate. After every layer, we're always going to do the cleanup. Make sure you clean up as well as you can because once we complete one layer, we can't go back to the, do the other layer. And that's what's kind of difficult about these glass or plastic paintings. I'm doing the same for the flowers. I'm using the dabbing technique to make the base color. And now it's time for the eyes. Since the highlights are on the very top, I'm doing them first. Once they're completely dry, I'm doing the pupils since they're underneath the highlights. Lastly, I'm going to make a gradient from a dark blue to a light blue. I'm using a toothpick for this because it gives me more precision. And here's how it looks. But we have one last layer to do and that is the base layer. Make sure you are completely finished with all of the shadows, highlights, outlines and everything because once you do the base layer, you can't go back. I'm using a technique like the dabbing except I'm using a lot more paint. So it's more like floating. I'm floating my paintbrush on top of the paint and very lightly dragging it around but I'm not actually touching the layers below it that much. You don't want to touch the other layers because it might come off. So be very gentle and imagine that your paintbrush is floating on top of the paint. Use a lot of paint for this. You don't want it to have brush strokes showing through. Since we can't go back and fix any of the other layers, I'm going to paint on the front side instead of the back side. I'm going to lighten up the shadows because I thought it was too dark. I'm doing a little bit more touch-ups. And now I'm doing Mod Podge to seal everything in. Put Mod Podge wherever you have paint, even on the front side. But be careful because the Mod Podge has texture, so don't try to put it on the clear unpainted parts too much. And now we're done. Next are some embroidered see-through bookmarks. You will need an embroidery hoop. Use the smallest embroidery hoop that you have. I made one out of a plastic container lid that I cut a hole through. You also need transparent fabric. I'm just using a ribbon. I wish it didn't have glitter on it, but just use whatever you have. You can use tulle, which is like the material in some curtains or dresses. Put your fabric on top of your sketch and use a washable marker to outline it. It needs to be washable so we can wash it off later. Clip it on the side of your hoop so it has the most tension. I knotted a 6 strand thread. We're going to start with the branch. For this we're going to use a stem stitch. So come up. Then go one stitch forward. But don't pull it all the way tightly. Leave a little loop. Hold the loop on the side. Then come up in the center. Now pull it tight. We're going to repeat the stitch. Go one stitch forward. Hold the loop. And come up in the middle. Pull it tight. We're using the stem stitch because it creates a very thick bold line. Keep using this to make the main branch. 
don't branch off into any of the larger branches. You can branch off to make a super small branch. Just go to the top and then go back down to the main branch. Then continue making the main branch. To finish it off, I'm going to tie a knot by going underneath the stitch and then going through the loop. Then I'm going to pull it tight. Now cut it off while leaving a lot of excess. Use that excess thread to split it in half and tie a double knot. When we're doing transparent embroidery, we need to make the back as clean as possible without any messy threads going around. We need to start a new thread anytime we move to a location that's further away because we don't want to be crossing the thread around and making it all messy. I'm using the stem stitch again for this branch. Don't forget to tie a knot and start a new thread. Now we're moving on to flowers. I used a 3 strand thread that I knotted. Start up in the center, then go back down close to where you went up but not in the same hole. Don't pull it all the way tight, leave a little loop. Now come up inside the loop where you want the point of the petal to be. Pull it tight. You have created a loop. Secure that loop by going down a little bit above the petal. Now we have a petal outline. We're going to fill it in by making one stitch from the bottom then to the top of the petal. And that's our first petal. That's what you call a lazy daisy stitch. We're going to repeat it again. Come up, go down close to the same hole, hold the loop, come up inside the loop where you want the point of the petal to be, then go back down to secure it. Fill in the petal outline by making one stitch from the bottom of the petal, then to the top. We're going to repeat this in a clockwise pattern. Make sure you always go to the petal right next to it, not going across to keep the back clean. Each flower has about 5 petals. We're going to fasten off a flower every time we complete one. So this is how you do a folding petal. We're not going to do the lazy daisy stitch. We're just going to make some straight stitches. Starting from the bottom of the petal, going to the top. Now for the wispy clouds. I started a 3 strand thread that I knotted. We're going to do a weaving pattern. So go down and up. Down and up. Keep weaving back and forth like that in an S shaped pattern. We can cheat a little bit since the fabric is transparent. Some of the stitches are actually on the back side, but we can still see them on the front since the fabric is transparent. After you finish the first squiggly line, go back around with the second line to make it a double line cloud. Make sure to leave a little gap next to the first line so that you can see two lines. Continue the weaving pattern going up and down. Lastly, I just tied it off. I also added wispy clouds on the very top. So now we're going to make a wire frame. Use any wire you have. I'm using an old notebook wire. Before I cut it off, I measured it to make sure it fits a rectangle shape. Then I just use wire colors to snip it off. You can use your hands to bend it into a rectangle shape, or you can use some pliers to try to bend it at the corner. Try to make it as straight as you can. Once you have the rectangle shape, cut off the excess, but make sure you still leave a little bit of excess wire. Because we're going to use that excess wire to connect the rectangle frame. To connect it, bend the ends of the wire into a hook shape. Now we're going to start a new thread. Tie the thread onto the corner of the connected wire. And just wrap it around like this. And make sure you do some extra wrapping at this corner of connection to prevent the poking wire from poking out. Then just tie a knot to secure it. And don't worry about the excess thread, we'll glue it down later. Now we're going to attach the wire frame onto the fabric. Tie a knot to the corner of the frame, then start on the outside of the frame. Go back down to the inside. Starting from the outside of the frame, then going to the inside. Just wrap around like this about every 1 centimeter. And don't worry about the fabric excess around the frame, we're going to cut that off later. Make sure to make smaller stitches at the corners. 
Once we have finished back to where we started, we're going to tie a knot. Just go underneath one of the previous stitches, just like we always do. Now for the tassel. We're going to use a piece of extra thread. Make sure to make it really long. Then keep folding the thread in half until you get the length that you want. Cut a smaller piece of thread and tie it on the top part of the tassel to secure it. Thread the needle through the excess thread that we tied it with. And we're going to use this to sew it onto the book. Pull it up from the bottom, then go back down on the other side of the frame. Use the extra thread to tie and wrap it around the top part of the tassel. Now we're going to cut the loops of the tassel to make it an actual tassel. You can trim the tassel if needed. Now let's secure the excess thread. Put a dot of glue anywhere where there's a little bit of excess thread poking out. Use the glue to push down the excess thread. Push it on top of the embroidered part so it's not visible from the front. Cut off the excess fabric around the border and make sure that you don't cut off the threads on the frame by accident or the tassel. Put a little bit of glue around the border and smear it around so we can secure it. If you accidentally get a little bit of glue on the clear part, just use a wet cloth to rub it off. And here's the finished bookmark. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.